everyone, Pokemon just me and the witch here. Hi guys, it's me Bella here. And today we're going to try something different. So many of you may remember that we've mentioned about doing a live stream soon. Hopefully, if everything t t we test if the technology works well, this is one of the options of the games we could play. Uh, and we just wanted to give a quick run just to see that we can at, at least record the gameplay. Just to see that technology is on our side for once. Anyway, this is Omen X Ethio Plague. We've never played it before, neither of us, uh, so we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. <laughs> and we haven't actually looked up anything about the game either, so we're going into this blind. Let the beginning of a journey. You're accompanied by the sounds of the rig rigging rustling in the winds and the swelling of the waves as you stroll along the ship's deck. Its rocking evo evokes a slight sense of nausea. The wood gro groaning faintly with your every step, as, it's, as if something groaning. Inside, groaning faintly with your every step, as if something inside wanted to scream but didn't quite have the energy. A journey, a long journey. Your ship is headed for Sansi Bar. How long have you been at sea? You cannot even remember. The days follow one another, never changing. It feels like living in an endless haze, days, and captured by the outline of those unknown waters. But all in all, you don't mind the feeling. After all, you're here to forget. Okay, this get interesting. Ooh, that was nice. Really poetic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. My voice went a bit weird there. <laughs> Your name is Jake Han uh, Hantington. Sorry if I mispronounced this. Uh, you're a doctor, a researcher, or at least you were proud to call yourself one before your entire world crumbled around you. You have always fought to save people's lives, but now you face a different battle where you have to kill. Such is the irony of fate. You enlisted in order to escape from yourself and above all else, from the pain. You, like, you look out to sea, wondering whether this ship can carry you far enough. <laughs> this is taking Ro -ro. a twist. Roro. -ro. <laughs> yeah? So, I'm assuming, because Jake is a very male name, <laughs> so we're meant to be some man named Jake. The Chiro is meant to be Jake. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, I mean, this person being Jake... And apparently they were a researcher or a doctor, you know, something, uh, but they, like, but now they have to kill? <laughs> okay, this is taking quite a bit of a twist there. <laughs> yeah, do aren't doctors meant to take like an hypocrite oath or something? Yeah, this is, no, yeah, that, uh, yeah, but I don't know, hopefully we'll explain why he has to kill. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what we have gotten ourselves into. <laughs> <laughs> I blame you. Reality seems suspended during sea travel. Time loses all meaning and extends in infinite, infinitely, just like the blue expanse spread out before you. Day after day, you have been watching the horizon, a head bobbing up and down, up and down, when... Dun dun dun. <laughs> Let's see. Head. Jake, remind me again while we're here. It feels like all this water has wiped my memory clean. I wonder who they are. So it seems like Jake is not alone in this ship. Ah, uh, I, I wonder who they are, yeah. Let's, shall we see what happens next? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Brand new character. You've got two experience points. Oh, nice. The voice mm. belongs to Ed O'Bannon, a, a blonde Irish boy. He can't be much older than 16, and just like every other evening, he's had a drop too much to drink. He <laughs> blames the long voyage for his memory voyage. lapses. Voyage for his memory lapses. <laughs> of so, course he would, of course he would. We have two options. We can indulge or we can ignore. What do you think? Um, I can't remember what he said to us now. 
I kind of want. I kind of want to ignore him. Yeah. Oh, oh so you can have that speaker bed, or you don't feel much like talking. It's late, and you'd rather go back below deck. Below deck. Leave me alone, Ed. We'll talk when you so uh, you've so uh, sobered up. Sick of me, Jake. Just tonight. With these words, you leave Ed to his goddamned Irish drinking songs, and you head back to Ed below deck. It's time to sleep. Okay. I wonder if there's anyone else in the ship, or if it's just them two. I think there'd have to be more on a whole ship. You can't just have two people. Hmm. I do find it interesting that they made it someone Irish who drinks because that's kind of um, what's the word, Roro? Stereotypical. That. Yeah, they kind of made it very stereotypical having an Irish drink. Hmm. You're lying in your bank uh, in your bunk, and just like every other night for the best part of a year, you're having a hard time falling asleep. Toss and turn, uh, and turn, in your sweet, as uh, in your sweat silk sheets until. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what happens. Jack, oh, are you? There's some nice images here. Yeah, that the answer is really nice. Like, it's mm. Very sketchy. Yeah. It. Sorry for interrupting you. I just happened yeah, to right. say that. <laughs> we just interrupted someone speaking. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All the characters. <laughs> Ryan. It's Ryan Mepucci, the man in the bunk next to yours. He's the assistant cook, hailing from Italy. Suddenly, you remember that tomorrow it's your turn in the ship's mess. Food. Foodie, food, food. Should we listen? Yes. Yeah. Speak with <laughs> Ryan or avoid you pretend to sleep? Should we listen um, to him? Listen because he makes food and we need to make food. <laughs> said Ryan I left you a list of the provisions we need in the gallery tomorrow I want to talk I want to talk to you about something else as well I've been hearing rumors along the soldiers but maybe we should discuss the matter tomorrow good night Jake oh did did he say soldiers yeah so we're on oh, like a that makes sense why he may be saying about campus maybe yeah, okay, he must be in the army then. Yeah, he's probably in the army. And I'm guessing that uh, Jake um, is a doctor then, in, like for them. That's why he has to move to kill. But it's not. Yes, yeah, that moral. Because he's not. He's because he's not actually a. Because a lot. I'm assuming a lot of army doctors are normally also soldiers, right? Yeah, I'm guessing like they. Pro at least they will need to know some self-defense and all. In well, I know. I think I think an attack. army doctor, if I'm not mistaken, is actually a soldier as well as a doctor. But they're like, they're also an actual soldier, so they can do soldier stuff. Yeah, probably they also receive the training, I think. But they also do that. Yeah. Yeah, they have to. I, they can't be let on a battlefield without being trained as a soldier. Okay, so we got that. But I wonder what he has to discuss, like for, that he's leaving for tomorrow. Hmm, well, if it's about the soldiers, I do wonder, and it mentioned about killing, I... <laughs> hmm. I mean, he's leaving it till tomorrow, but I wonder if that's because it's, they're not in a private enough area to talk about it. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's some, a rumour that's going to affect the morale. So, like, he doesn't want to, in case someone else hears. Or maybe it's about one of the soldiers being on the, being for the enemy instead. Ooh, that'd be quite, like, quite... Because that's... If you get a rumour like that, you're done for. Yeah. The dorm is filled with heavy breathing and the loud snoring of your companions. Apparently, everyone's sleeping soundly except you for you. Turning over in your bed, you find the note Ryan left you under your pillow. Ooh. Should we check tomorrow? Should we just check it now? Because, I mean, we should have, like, they're having trouble sleeping anyway. Mm, might as well, and it'll be a good idea that way tomorrow we're not in a rush to get everything for the pantry. Hmm. So you light the candle you keep near the bed and read the note right away. Let's see what happens. Oh, the 
I love the art style though. I know it's so pretty and like the the black, white, and the grey tones are just perfectly done. So and in general, the whole like the whole journal look and the whole um the background like the wooden desk look it all is really perfect this whole game style is lovely it's also a, it's almost like, like we're reading the journal of someone it really is oh that letter though just oh. uh, the candlelight flickers in the dark and the honestly words... feel like i've opened up an envelope <laughs> the candlelight flickers in the dark and the words come to life and dance before your eyes while your pupils get used to the faint light of the wavering flame Oh, I, I can actually feel that happening. I love also like how much, like the like the written wise, it's quite descriptive. Mm, sometimes it's almost poetic though. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> they put a lot of effort into this game. It's it's definitely got a lot of effort put into it. We haven't even finished reading the journal and started the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is actually the game. I, mean, I think it might be a, one of those that we just have to choose the story options between the storyline, but it's all set in oh. the journal. Okay. It's quite nice. Jake, you think you joined the army to atone for your sins, but you're mistaken. You're not headed for Sansibar by chance. What you will see over there will change your perspective so much that you will turn to your old profession once again. And during this journey, you will discover that you have a friend. Uh, um, okay. okay, that's not ominous. Let's see. Let's... Okay, well. It's not Ryan's list. You wonder whether it's just an old prank by your fellow soldiers, but it seems too clever for them. While considering several theories, you finally slip into slumber, gently rocked by the waves. Hmm. I do wonder if maybe that has something to do with the rumour that Ryan wanted to talk to us about. I think it does. I don't know. It's that, it probably does, I feel. So, I'm wondering then... Jake, he must have been some sort of assassin or something, I'm guessing. Hitman or I, killer. I mean, in his maybe past life. he failed at saving someone's life. And that's what he has to atone for. Who knows? But all I know is... So it must be common knowledge then, I assume. Or else he would be thinking that... So, it must be common knowledge on the ship then, what he's done in his past and what he thinks. Hmm, either that or, I mean... Maybe he's been a soldier, like Doctor Soldier, for a while, and he thinks he's atoned. He has to atone for something he did during this time. I know, but the fact that the fact that he's not um, trying to re reason who it belongs to, who would have done that? He's thinking it must be a prank, meaning most people must know about it. Yeah, I wonder. Okay. It won't be long until the landing, but this doesn't mean you can escape kitchen duty. Ryan hands you a bag of potatoes to peel, while he starts working on a bunch of carrots, slicing them with skill and accuracy, which is second to none, better than anyone you've ever seen. So, we have two options here, and two reasons. Are you here because you really want to be a soldier, or are there other reasons? Or past? How long have you been in the army? Oof, um... Well, hmm. on the reasons one really <laughs> I know but but is that something you'd feel comfortable asking this guy should we not just ask the safe question of how long have you been in the army but then we, I mean we don't know how they long how long they've known each other mm -hmm. okay reasons it is then I mean there's also the question that if it was Ryan who wrote the letter this might help the reason why I like the option of reasons might help us <laughs> gather more information about what who, like who is behind that letter? And the mm, maybe, and maybe, and maybe he'll ask us the same thing, and we'll get a bit to know a bit more about ourselves. Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, are you asking me if I joined the army out of passion? Well, I wouldn't say so. But the pay is good, and the meals are guaranteed. Besides, it doesn't seem to me that you're here for passion either. See what happens. Is it that obvious? Okay. So at least we know that for sure that everyone's uh, this all like people from army, soldiers. 
but Jake doesn't seem too passionate about his job, and it seems to be trying to atone for sins of his past. Mm. Don't worry, apart from some fancy officers, I bet few people are here just for fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't imagine being a soldier sounds fun. Shouts coming from the deck to interrupt your chatting. Land ahoy! You hurry up. Aho! Uh, land ho! I think. I don't um, know. Because <laughs> you would normally say ahoy matey, but I thought you'd say land a. Oof. Yeah, Just maybe it is ahoy. <laughs> it is ahoy, I think you're right. Oh. You hurry up and carry out your task before landing. They have to face there. Sansibar port is a racket. Soldiers yell in a wide variety of accents, while, while goods are loaded onto the de uh, to the docks, piling up in smaller mountains of crates. You're on the deck observing this crate. On the cra oh, crates. Did I say something different? I well. Maybe it just glitched a little because I heard something else. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're on the deck, observing the slowly approaching shapes of Stone Town. Soon, at last, you'll once again set foot on solid ground. Oh no, maybe we'll by landing in this place. We'll get to know more of the past of Jake. Mm. Well, I mean, someone said, I mean, the note says that his perspective is going to change and he will want to go back to his profession. To his old ways. Yeah. Maybe hmm. he's blaming himself for something in the past. I think he's guilty. Maybe for... we'll meet someone from his past. Yeah. Maybe he's not the one. He's not guilt as gu the one who's guilty for what he did in the past as he thinks, but someone else that did it. We'll Whatever. just have to wait and yeah. see. Yeah, granted some free time. So you treat yourself to a stroll around town. You're walking along the quay where the beggar approaches you. His rough hooded tunic covers his face. He reeks and walks with a limp, leaning heavily on a stick. Even though you don't understand what he's saying, you understand from his gesture he's asking for charity. Shall we help or avoid? Mmm, this is a tough one. I tend to avoid people when they do, because you never know if they're actually needing help or not. But we also don't know anyone in this town. We don't know... I feel bad for him, but at the same time... Should we help him? Because I, I feel like maybe this... You, like, you, it'll help something to do with his mm, past. Mm -hmm. Slowly, maybe. Okay, we'll help him this one time, could he? Yeah. If it backfires, I'm blaming you, Roro! You <laughs> <laughs> hand out a coin to the beggar, and as he reaches out to grab it, he notices a two on the inside of his wrist. You only get a glimpse of it, but it strikes you with its peculiar pe peculiarity. The simple eye reminds you of an eye. Okay. He was probably part of some gang organization cult or something now. Yeah, I feel like it's something going to do. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be related, like with whatever it is that the letter was saying. That his perspective is going to change. Hmm. Maybe. Who knows? But that is an interesting tattoo, though. Yeah. The beggar tries to get your attention and follows you. He grabs your shirt, forcing you to stop. He slips his hand into your pocket and then suddenly starts running. His apparent disability has gone and is no longer living here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Roro, I told you! Um, should we not chase after him? Because I feel like we're going to, like, there's something we want to know about him. <laughs> I feel like he's probably taken our wallet, though. You let him go. Or a pouch of money or something. You chase him. Or maybe it's the note. I told you, though, Roro. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. Maybe if we hadn't helped him, he would have still stolen from us, okay? <laughs> Mm, I think if we avoided him, we probably wouldn't have had that trouble. <laughs> Should we chase after him to try to recover what was ours? Yeah. <laughs> the 
Pega runs along the deck, uh, the dock, as Nim runs. Runs, yeah. You said runs. <laughs> uh, the beggar runs along the dock as nimbly as an acrobat. When two sailors carrying some bulky crates pop out in front of him, he waltz <laughs> clears over them as easy as if he were stepping over them. The sailors <laughs> stop to yell at him, dropping the crates and blocking your path. Go around or clear the way? Uh, does it give us an option of how we're clearing the way or? You ask them to let you pass. You ignore the men and go around the crates. Hmm. I think like going around might be the faster way to get, like to catch up with the uh, with the beggar. Hmm. Maybe. And the sailors seem pretty unhappy. Uh, should we go for it? Well, you're the one who got us into this mess. You pick this time. <laughs> you swerve right and sprint past the obstacles, ignoring the men, and running straight towards the beggar. When the thief realizes you're still chasing him, he jumps onto one of the small boats, moored in a row in the harbor. Wait, what? What did you say? Um, when the thief... Uh, which part? The full page? Um, after the um, jumps on the small boat. Uh, he jumps onto one of the small boats, moored? Moored? You yeah, I heard, I, I heard a W for some reason. That's why I was like, what did you say? <laughs> I, I read it as word. Is that how you say it? Word in a row in the harbour. He hops effortlessly from one boat to the next in spite of their movement and quickly gets away. And we have the option of checking. So like, before continuing the chase, you'd better make sure he has actually stolen something valuable or jumped you won't give up give up you'll catch the thief no matter the cost okay so what should we do check or jump i would jump but i guess the responsible thing would be to check so are we responsible or chimmy i mean yeah they're responsible would be to check but i feel like some like the beggar is I going to like take us somewhere that we him. need to go he tricked us we need to catch him i i just feel like this is Becca's going to lead us to somewhere we need to be to learn about what is going to change our perspective. Plus, more than anything, he tricked us. We can't let him get away with that. <laughs> I'm mostly because I'm curious where he would, uh, the beggar will take us, <laughs> mostly because of the tattoo. <laughs> we mm. have different reasons why we want to jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounded so wrong that we yes. want to jump. It makes you sound like we're going to jump off a bridge or something. <laughs> Jump, 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 jump! Working up the courage, you continue the chase, hopping onto the moored boats. You manage to keep your balance, but after a couple of rather hasty jumps, you have to stop and slow down, or you'll fall into the water. I wonder if we'll lose him or not. <laughs> the thief, however, has landed on an occupied boat, and the fisherman on board, on board has caught him by the foot in a bit to stop him. You must take advantage of it to catch up. Hurry up or be cautious. Speed. You speed up even at the cost of ending up into the water. Or you cautious. You advance cautiously, taking advantage of the fugit fugitive's struggle. Should Ooh. we be cautious for once? <laughs> for once, I guess we have to be. Uh. Yeah, Hopefully, we can still catch him. Let's see, hopefully. You see the beggar wriggling out of the fisherman's hole before hitting him square in the face with a punch that sends one of his teeth flying into the air and him straight into the brine. Oh. Moving cautiously, you detect a different path from the fugitives. Instead of chasing him, you move to the boat next to you. The shortcut you've taken lets you skip a couple of boats. You can reach him faster this way and pop up just in front of him. Ooh, Ooh, nice! The cautious one out this time! Yeah, I hope that would be... It seems like it's going to ha come handy to be cautious, but I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be the one who got punched. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually confused by the wording. Does the beggar get punched or the fisherman get punched? I think it's, it's the fisherman. Ooh, poor fisherman. Yeah. The beggar deserves to be punched, little thief. The man leaps to get back on the dock, but you manage to catch him mid-flight. You both fall into water. 
<laughs> so much for being cautious. <laughs> hopefully he can't swim. I mean, hopefully he can swim. The man tries to resist, and it hits you, but he seems to have trouble floating. You manage to get <laughs> back what was stolen from you. The message which was in your pocket. I, I guess I, I guessed it then. Gee, I guessed that it was the letter somehow. Hmm. <laughs> still. I feel like it's. Related. I still thought it might be our wallet, but hey. <laughs> but I feel like it's going to be related somehow. That mm. tattoo, the letter. Maybe he used to be part of the people who had the tattoo and all that. Let's see. Was the fake beggar just trying to steal some money? Or was, he, or was he deliberately aiming for the message? While you are engrossed in your thoughts, the thief manages to escape. You don't bother following him. You slowly swim to the dock and get out of the water. Well, so much for a chase. I, I guess we just got a letter back. <laughs> but it gives us an idea of what he stole. Yeah, but I wonder why. And if we'll meet the beggar again. Hmm. But this is why I told you never to trust beggars. You're still confused about what just happened when Ryan approaches you in the dark. Ryan was a chef person, right? Yes. Jake, the heck are you doing? Leave's over. We've been called to master. Hmm. You follow the half Italian to the dock of your ship. The troop is examined. And soon makes its way to headquarters. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, the tattoo, maybe they were part of an army. And. Like, um. Somehow he ends up getting stuck there. And that's what's going to happen to the troop. If they're not careful mm. or something. Maybe. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. You march with the squadron you were assigned to, lost in your force. Squadron. Squadron. You mm. march with the squadron you were assigned to, lost in your force. You expected an entirely different welcome from San Zavar. I think that's the end of the first chapter. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed, um, and yeah. Apologies for any um, differences you may hear. We, uh, due to social distancing, we're doing this over a Skype call, so there was a bit of lag on my end. But hopefully, it won't like affect too much the quality of the video. Hopefully, it shouldn't. It? Should not. Should should not. Should <laughs> should not have affected the quality. <sighs> um. Hope you enjoyed. If you like to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to join the Poke Avengers, and subscribe to join the Poke Avengers family, and hit the bell button to receive notifications. And if you want to see this game be done on our live stream, just vote for it. If you'd like to see a different one, vote for that, or just comment a different game altogether if it's not on our list. And if you liked, uh, if you if you want to join, we have a Discord server with the announcement of the live stream so you can vote there too and you can give us suggestions of what would you like to see in the channel and just discuss with uh, like the rest of the book adventure family mm -hmm. till that's next time stay safe and have a nice day have a great day week month year to me and